Madam Speaker, uh, before I get into the bill itself, as um, has been the theme for the day, as many members would have um, opined on different things important to and related to uh, the economy and other aspects of, of our country, just wish to just wish to say a few words. Um, the last week on May 10, we would have joined with Bahamans across the nation to remember the tragedy that happened off of Ragged Island um, with the four members of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force who gave their life to their country. And I'm reminded um, as I stand here today the many selfless acts of so many Bahamians that give so much to our country and to those particular men um, who will always be with us and their entire families. We owe them a great deal of gratitude. And so I wish to just thank their families for, and to remember them for what they've given the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in their sacrifices. Also, uh, Madam Speaker, while I'm on my feet, I wish to give a, well, I won't say a shout out. I wish to commend congratulations to one of, uh, one of my constituents, well-known constituent in Cynthia, Cynthia Mother Pratt, whose name uh, will be adorned on the, uh, on the complex. And uh, obviously, the contribution of, of Miss Pratt, as I call her, I always tell her that I'm, I'm too junior to call her Mother Pratt, um, is well known. And from I was a young man playing basketball, was always well aware, was always well aware of her contributions on so many levels, but particularly in sports, as I, as I played college basketball. So I just would like to. Uh, congratulate, uh, congratulate her. Also wish to congratulate Madam Speaker um, Terrell McCoy, who has become a niece of mine through through marriage, um, for bringing the bronze medal home at, from Carifta, and so want to congratulate her and congratulate. Um, her family, um, her parents, on the great job that they have done um, in ensuring that she is becoming this great, this great athlete that all of us in the entire country um, is proud of. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, Fox Hill um, we've talked about it already. Um, there are, as we know. Thousands of Bahamians, um, Madam Speaker, thousands of Bahamians who, who continue to struggle and who continue to be hurt negatively by the inflationary environment that we continue to deal with. Yes, sir. And um, I know that we will continue to ask the opposition that is for VAT to be removed of bread basket items. Um, it is something that some may want to make light of, uh, but definitely the cries of the people in St. Barnabas and across the length and breadth of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas demands that we continue to echo their, echo their cries uh, to the government uh, for us to appreciate that as we speak, uh, many Bahamians, Many Bahamians um, cannot afford a gallon of gas, which is over six dollars. Cannot afford, you know, a dozen eggs. And what is so profound, as we all know, um, those things exceed the minimum hourly wage. So it should really tell us the magnitude, among other things, and remind us of the great struggles of many Bahamians are facing, and I don't say that, I don't say that lightly. I have heard the, and we have heard um, all different 
reasons why VAT cannot be taken off of bread basket items. Um, the government has said that it's not feasible. Uh, feasible does not mean impossible. Uh, it not being feasible just means that it's not easily adjusted, but meaning that it can be adjusted. And Bahamians are crying every day. And Bahamians across the political spectrum are crying every day for some relief to be brought to their lives as they continue to struggle every single day, every single day, with the burdens of purchasing food and trying to put gasoline in their, in their cars. Uh, Madam Speaker, most recently I had the opportunity, um, I was visiting a relative in the straw market, I was in a relative in the straw market, and had an opportunity to talk to a number of, just a number of the vendors, um, just by way again, of saying hello to some of my family members in the straw market. And, um, and the government may be aware of this, but you know, it's something that I told the vendors that I would bring to this parliament. And so um, the member for Fort Shallow, who I think is responsible for the straw market, um, if he would have heard these cries uh, before, then that, that, is, that is great, Madam Speaker. Uh, they have some great concerns about, um, I think that there's a staggered schedule uh, that they're operating on. Obviously it came about because of, because of COVID. The schedule came about because of COVID. And, um, and so, sorry? No, yeah, but that's not, yeah, but, oh man. But that, that's, but we passed that, that's not, that in the point, I, I just said, no, hold on, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Madam Speaker, Ma Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, protect me, please. Protect me, Madam Speaker, please, right? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come, I didn't say this blaming anybody, I simply said, I simply said, I simply said that I visited the straw market. I simply said that I visited the straw market and the vendors in the straw market shared some things with me that I promised them in my duty as a member of parliament that I would bring and raise it here in this honorable place. I even said just now the member for Fort Charlotte, the member for Fort Charlotte, who I think is responsible for the uh, straw market. Uh, I, I would have said just now on my feet that he might have heard these cries that I'm about to express, and if so, that is good. That's all. This isn't about. This isn't about. This isn't about ascribing blame. So, there's a staggered schedule, and they're asking. The, there are some of many of them are asking the government just to revisit, just to revisit the schedule. Let, let me just say one second, please, for Charlotte. Obviously, COVID uh, would have influenced uh, this present staggered schedule. Right, so obviously we are aware of that. Just again emphasizing that a number of vendors are asking that it be revisited because it's impacting them in a negative way. So the chair recognizes the honorable member for Fort Charlotte. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the member for yielding. Um, Madam Speaker, the staggered schedule was on the recommendation of the Ministry of Health. And in my last um, uh, conversation with the chairman about a week ago, um, I raised this question and they're having consultation with uh, the Ministry of Health. It's a very small space and um, it's really a matter of public health. And as the Ministry of Health, which is in constant um, consultation as well as visitation of that area, based on their recommendation, it will be revisited. So it's not a matter which is exclusively within the discretion of the management, uh, but it has to be on the guidance of the Ministry of Health. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you very, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I thank the Honorable Member for, um, for Charlotte. Um, additionally, additionally, the vendors, the vendors just to the north of Parliament here, have also talked about some concerns as well. Um, sorry, Truzo? Yeah, they've talked about some concern as well. Uh, some seems to be logistic, um, logistics in terms of cruise passengers coming off the ship, not being able to patronize um, or be exposed to their business, as well as um, um, 
some, some shelter issues, and then some bathroom facilities. And so that's something as well that I had expressed to them that I would bring, would bring to Parliament. Madam Speaker, one of the things that has always been important to me, and I'm sure to a number of parliamentarians, is that on different occasions that we can, that we ought to sometimes summon some objectivity, despite these political lines, and acknowledge that both major political parties have contributed significantly. And I know some may say that's debatable, but significantly to the Commonwealth, to the building of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And I've said that because I believe that it is vitally important that we, and this may, this may sound naive, uh, but I'll say it anyway. I think that it's vitally important that we acknowledge when something works and when something has been done in good and well form, even if it's a previous government. And I, and I truly believe that. Um, as the member for Freetown would have said, that the reality of it is, is despite getting to, uh, we agree on a destination, the route there may be something that, um, where you may have a difference. And so I respect that you can honestly uh, and justifiably have a, have a difference of opinion of how you get to a certain destination. So I'm not suggesting that every time that there's an opposite view or a different view, that means it's purely political. What I am saying is, is that where we can acknowledge the good things or that a good thing has worked for the Bahamian people that I believe we ought to do it. I believe that that's the duty that we owe the Bahamian people. And um, as an extension of that, uh, as we uh, debate this digital assets, this DARE Act and the amendment, um, the truth is this whole digital um, revolution, digital asset revolution, started under the free national movement. And maybe not directly in those words, members um, throughout the day, um, from a chronological standpoint, would have spoken to um, a number of um, um, policies um, and decisions that were made, Madam Speaker, that happened under the Free National Movement Administration that would have led us here, led us here today. So we know that the DARE Act was drafted and passed under the Free National Movement. Um, the sand dollar was created under the FNM, and, um, and so we know our pioneering um, position, if you will, um, is due in part to the great work of the Free National Movement. Uh, Madam Speaker, I intend to support this bill. I know that members was waiting here. I support this bill. But I, what I really would like to say or emphasize too, and the member, my leader would have talked, spoken about it, the member from Marco City, uh, among other things, is that as we, as we carve out, as we carve out this, this piece of um, industry, and in a lot of respects, as, as it goes a long way in helping us to diversify our economy. Um, I want us to keep in, mind, keep, keep in mind on our peripheral that we may have some persons and probably have some persons who don't want us to be in the business or to be successful in the business. And I have to say at this point, um, you know, comparatively speaking, um, I have always been um, quite angered at times, even before uh, becoming a member of parliament, at uh, the great deal of energy that OECD and, and the European Union uh, would put in to move the goalposts as it relates to a lot of financial services, aspects of financial services. And clearly, um, for some time now, they obviously have not want the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in in the business. And um, likewise, um, I hope, um, and it's, it's my prayer, that, that this government and all governments after uh, 
um, will ensure that we continue to um, hold on to our sovereignty, hold on to our sovereignty and assert our sovereignty. Um, yes, we, we, we make amendments and changes and enhancements to be a player in this global, um, the global community, there is no doubt. Um, uh, but we must continue to hold fast to our sovereignty um, and to determine, and to determine as our forefathers set it out, to determine our own destiny and to push back um, as reasonably possible. And I'd say reasonably possible because again, we do live in a global community. And at the end of the day, we make decisions that benefit the Bahamian people, even if sometimes um, certain decisions cannot be appreciated or can be adequately um, litigated for the public, and, and, and that happens. But I, that was just something that I just really wanted to, uh, to emphasize, because it's very, um, very, very important uh, for Madam Speaker. And this, this regulation, these amendments, um, will go a long way, go a long way, as I said, as we, as we take off. I mean, this, this industry has already started to take off. Um, obviously, there are some um, cautionary signs here and there, but I believe that there is an opportunity um, for this to reap, uh, uh, this to reap dividends for the Commonwealth of the Bahamas um, and the Bahamian people, um, Madam Speaker. And so, Madam Speaker, um, with that, and as I as I close, as I said, today I would be I would be very very brief. Um, just would like to close by saying that I'm a bit reflective today, as as most most of us were today. But I'm a bit reflective today, and what I would just like to leave um, on the floor of this house today, as I as I take my seat is that, um, you know, I came into politics, Madam Speaker, I came into politics, I would say, as I'm sure all of us, wanting to, to serve as best as we can for, for as long as we can. But I just want to say as I stand here today that, again, um, it may be considered naive, but I, I, I believe I should say it, that, um, we have to, our politics in a lot of ways and how we conduct our politics, okay? I'm not talking about anything specific, uh, has been in a lot of ways the greatest inhibitor, the greatest inhibitor to our progress um, as a country, the greatest inhibitor um, to our progress. And we must find some ways, uh, we must find, sorry? We must find some ways. We must we must find some ways to um, be able to be gladiators in the arena of politics. Be gladiators in the arena of politics, um, but still always ensuring, but still always ensuring that that final destination, which is obviously obviously an even greater an even greater Commonwealth, um, is something that we must continue to continue to focus on. Um, I'm very grateful that I live in the most beautiful, that we live in the most beautiful country in the world, in the greatest country in the world. And so, Madam Speaker, you know, with that and that slight reflection, um, I support um, this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member. As many.